everybody and welcome to episode 11 of An Irish Knitting Podcast. I am Sam, I'm an artist, uh, illustrator and aspiring knitting designer based in the Republic of Ireland. And uh, you can find me around the internet looking for Irish farm art, both on Instagram, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, and I also have a Etsy shop in which I sell my original artworks, some prints, and going forward probably some needs as well. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much for coming by. This is my weekly, by weekly, monthly, whenever I have time type of uh, podcast or vlog in which I try to follow the classic knitting podcast schedule talking about uh, my finished works, works in progress, acquisition, and anything and everything that is going on in my crafty world, always through the eyes of an artist, of course. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. This really means a lot. And all of your comments in my past videos have been so, so lovely and heartwarming. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Today is Saturday morning and I really wanted to get a podcast up. As you've noticed, I haven't been filming for the past couple of weeks. This because, of course, life gets through and uh, stuff happens and I couldn't really find the time or the mind space to film. Back uh, last week I had, uh, I'm very grateful for it, but I had a couple of uh, painting commissions, two portraits, a portrait of a dog and a portrait of a uh, cat, that really took a lot of time. Uh, this because when I'm asked to paint a portrait of a pet, uh, especially if the pet is no longer with the owner, it always means really much to me to be able to deliver a very good result and uh, deliver the emotions that the owner attached to the pet. So whenever I'm asked to paint a commission a portrait, I really uh, focus a lot with the interaction with uh, the requester and as well the quality of the final painting. But I'm really, really happy with the two of them, especially the cat. I'm not uh, used to paint cats, but I'm not quite familiar with painting cats. So it was a, really a challenge, but uh, I really loved the final result. So now the paintings are with their owners and they are very, very happy with them. So this was the first thing that um, prevented me to film and the second thing it's uh, quite sad and please feel free to skip ahead if you may be triggered by this or whatever but some clever individual uh, decided to break into my home uh, last weekend while I was in town and uh, although they didn't uh, steal anything from the place they really destroyed the entire apartment. The doors are, have been developed and a couple of windows uh, smashed and uh, you know everything was out of every drawer. They were probably looking for cash or gold that of course I don't have but yeah it took a lot of time just to meet with the builders and uh, technicians to get everything fixed up and at least the place is secure. So almost everything is done. I just need to repaint the apartment or the house and that will probably come after Easter. But yeah, it's been quite annoying, really frustrating and uh, you know, if they were people in need, I would have accepted it, but finding the place completely messed up wasn't really acceptable, so it was quite painful. And it didn't happen to me before, so it was all of a new experience and a set of emotions. But anyway, this drove me to knit a lot. I found uh, knitting really relaxing, like a little escape between managing my 9 to 5 work and managing the meetings with the builders, the locksmith, uh, the painters, uh, the people that came to replace the alarm system and all of this. 
I found picking up my needles over and over and I found myself actually producing a lot of finished works. It's probably due to the repetitiveness of uh, knitting the activity that really calms me down. I always found it really calming to have something repetitive that just takes my mind off stuff, um, thoughts and worries. Uh, when I was in music school, for example, I used to enjoy very much playing uh, scales and rehearsing, uh, that type of thing, that type of repetitive techniques. So, yeah, here we go. Um, we can start with the finished work and once again, if you've been triggered by this, I kind of wanted to be transparent with you to let you know why I haven't been filming for a few weeks and what's really going on in my life. Um, if you have been triggered by this, I try to put some resources underneath that you may want to check out. But I'm fine uh, and I'm really happy that uh, my apartment is now in a decent shape. Um, still, we need to get a couple of marks off the walls and uh, some holes that have been done in the windows, but everything else is fine and I am morally and psychologically fine as well. So I'm really happy that I have a lot of needs to show you. And the first one being this lovely jumper here that you have seen in pieces before. This is the bubble sweater from Stephen West, uh, my number two. This is the second time that I knit this sweater and uh, if you follow me for a while you have been through all the drama of my first sweater. The first one was knitted in Cascade 220 and uh, something really interesting happened to that and if you are interested in learning what happened just go and check out my previous video. But after that jumper was defuncted, I really wanted to get a, a proper one, a new one, uh, because the fit is really beautiful, because I really love the colors that I choose, and uh, I think it's a very clever uh, construction as well. And we'll get into that just in a second. So, I finished this sweater, it really took no time at all, it's a very very easy knit and the way the pattern is constructed really drives you and walks you through every single step of the pattern. I found this quite clever and uh, really uh, helpful, although I'm used to knit uh, patterns from kind of more recipe type of patterns like if you've seen my um, rubbery page, my project page, I knitted a lot of sadness garn works and patterns and they are all just recipes, like they give you an initial number of stitches, an indication of uh, the decreasing or increasing the shape you want to knit, but everything else is left to you for your own sake. And um, yeah, this was a very different way to knit for me and I kind of enjoyed it. I struggled a bit with all the counting of the number of stitches at every single particular time of the project, which is fine. Um, it's just a different way too. But I think this will be really helpful if you are a very beginner knitter and you need to be walk through every single passage step that will probably be much more helpful. Uh, if you're used to more recipes type of uh, patterns that is probably a little annoying just because the stitch count never comes back as the pattern says but uh, yeah I have to unravel a lot of time. So on the construction of this pattern uh, of this jumper you start from uh, the top and down knitting the ribbing for the neckline and the neck band and this is folded in with a very clever construction in which you pick up stitches from the inside and then you go down with the yoke uh, doing this lovely bubble pattern technique and then you separate for the sleeves and body and you work down in stocking net which is easy peasy uh, as well and really takes no time at all it's a 
extraordinarily quick and I was so impressed by how fast it was. But flew from the needles. I have a couple of more jumper quantities to make this exact project as I want to make another one for uh, some gift as well. So here you have it. It's, it's quite beautiful and um, let's mention the yard now. The original one has been knitted in the Cascade 220. Um, I think I can put a picture, I don't even know if I have a photo, but this one instead has been knitted in uh, Sunness Garn Per Gint and Sunness Garn Perfect. The Per Gint is this lovely charcoaly color as the main color and the Perfect is this other contrasting color, which on camera probably shows like a little bit of a orange or a reddish purple but in real life it's really of a bluish purple. I can't understand why this happened. I tried to use different lights and a different camera setting but I can't get the color right so just imagine this as a bluish type of purple although it shows as orange. The yarn is a DK yarn, it's uh, a beautiful, beautiful Norwegian wool. The Pergint is 100% wool, while the Perfect is 75% wool and 25% nylon. Now, it comes in these lovely little balls, very easy to use. Uh, don't need to spawn them up or cake them up, and they are 50 gram balls by 91 meters. For the entire jumper I used 13 main colors and just one contrasting color, which is a bargain, I would say. This yarn cost around 5 euro a ball for 50 gram for 90 meters, so you get the math. It is not the cheapest yarn, but it is not expensive by any means. I think the entire jumper, considering everything, has costed me around 60 euro which is completely uh, fine for a hand-knitted jumper, it's a bargain price, I would say. And what else to say about this pattern? Nothing, I just enjoyed it very, very much. I must now take some pictures for Instagram, as you haven't seen this happening yet, but I will get to do that for sure. So this is my first Finnish works and once again this is a pattern by Stephen West is for sale on Ravelry and I'm going to put the links in my description as well. The second Finnish works it's a waistcoat by Adria Phil which is an Italian brand of yarn that you for sure know if you follow myself but it's a very very popular brand. Uh, it's a waistcoat with a sort of uh, diamond shape pattern on the front. It's a quite of an easy construction. I have it blocking here, but let me show you if I can. So I have no idea if you can see this. Well, I might just take some footage and pop it in the screen later on. Um, it's uh, a lovely little uh, knit that comes from a magazine. This is the issue number 71 of um, Dritto e Rovescio magazine from Adria Phil. I've spoken about this magazine before and uh, how much it was a discovery for me. This was a magazine that is probably not really popular, I have no idea, but it was heavily discounted, so I got it for about 2 euro in uh, the local yarn shop and basically I got like 7 different uh, issues of this magazine just because it was so cheap and each magazine have uh, so many patterns and it's quite beautiful to look at and the pictures are just stunning and of course I couldn't but start knitting from my magazine also because I find myself buying a number of books that I never use and um, yeah, uh, we should probably use more our pattern books rather than keep buying them online and uh, not use the ones that you have and every knitter that I know have a lot of books so yeah here you go so the waistcoat that I was doing is this one here hopefully you can see the 
picture, I couldn't find this on Ravelry. I couldn't find this online, so it's 100% book-wise, and uh, if you know about this pattern being online, let me know. Uh, I would really much love to put it into my Ravelry project page. It um, really uh, would help with my sanity to keep track of everything. But anyway, it's a beautiful little um, gilet or waistcoat that you need from the bottom and up. Uh, you need it in pieces, which was something really, really new to me. Uh, I needed first at the back the creasing for the armhole and um, collar, the neck base. And then you need the front, um, a certain amount uh, until the, the creasing for the armhole in which you start your diamond pattern, which is knitted using the intarsia technique. I kind of uh, wanted to get the diamond knitted in stranded color work, which is something I'm more familiar with, but um, the length of the floats between uh, a stitch and the other are way too big. So it was an experience to kind of dibble myself into intarsia and understanding how intarsia work. The dream goal will be to apply more and more intarsia to other works, especially working in the round. It was a really fun knit and I really develop a lot my purling technique, but I don't know if I enjoyed knitting flat as much as I do enjoy knitting in the round. Anyway, about the pattern. This pattern was um, written for a very chunky yarn with a gauge of about six stitches per 10 centimeters. I don't like chunky yarns and I tend to need quite light garments. But I really like the style and um, I really want really to use the written pattern in the book. So I decided to swatch a little bit and I got three times the gauge, which is about 20 to 24 stitches per 10 centimeters. And I basically went to the pattern and tripled every number that I have, including the decreasing number, the increasing number, and uh, the cast on and cast off. And that gave me a perfect proportionate shape for that garment. Of course, the pattern is written for a crop um, waistcoat uh, for a lady type of shape, for a more feminine shape. So here and there I put some tapering on the body and as well more uh, length on the body itself so that I could really wear it. I really wished it was dry but it's still on the blocker and it's, uh, I literally finished it yesterday. The last piece is to sew the pieces together, pick up for the neck band and uh, the armhole kind of reading situation. And, and that was it, and uh, it was finished. Uh, the, the other thing I did differently there was casting off using a tubular cast off, and as well the cast on, it was an Italian cast on which are becoming my most favorite way to cast on and to bind off. A thing that I found really interesting was uh, the interaction with the fabric that you get when the construction is in pieces. Originally, I sewed it together using some basting stitching, tried it on, and then slowly modified the basting until I got the perfect shape that fits my body as I wish. As you know, I like quite tighter type of garment with no ears or very uh, small positive ears. So it was very much fun just to try the garment on and tailor it, if you wish, through my body shape. Something again, I enjoyed the process, I didn't enjoy the making. All that mattress stitch has been just a bit of a pain, but it's finished, I like it. 
and I'm looking forward for the next one now. So something else to mention is the yarn. And of course, I use uh, these two cones here. Uh, the gray, it's Flanagay Gray by Holst Garn, while the light blue is uh, Summer Storm by Woolinitz. They are both 100% wool. I seriously don't know what type of quality of wool they are. Um, I know that um, the wool in it one, the light blue, is 100% British wool, but that's the only thing that I could find on the label. I held this twice, so it gave me more or less of a decay weight yarn, which worked wonderfully. While you are knitting with this, and let me put them back, the yarn is a little bit um, oily, it's drenched in spinning oil. So it results in a streaky knit, a really webby, a really see-through, but once it is washed, the actual fabric plumps up and the uh, yarn really bloom, as they say, so it becomes really lofty and fluffy and covers all those holes that uh, you may see when you knit. This gives you a really unpleasant knitting experience, but the present and the gift that you get, the surprise that you get after you wash your garment is just unbelievable. So it probably the unpleasantness, unpleasantness of the knitting actually pays off for the beautiful fabric that you get at the very end. It's a really soft, it's called super soft wool, but it's not like super mega soft. It's rough enough to keep the stitch definition, but it's soft enough not to be very itchy. And you know myself, I don't really like itchy wool, and I don't wear itchy wool, so that is a perfect yarn. And you will see through the works in progress, I am knitting a lot with uh, super washable, super soft wool, and British wool uh, lately, so that is something good to know. But uh, yeah, here you have it. Uh, this lovely, lovely waistcoat is a Kista by Adria Phil, and you can find it on issue 71 of Drito Erovesho magazine. The next finish work is, of course, a pair of socks, and here it is. You've seen this in the previous blog uh, for sure. I only had one finished. And now I have the sibling as well done. These are my sock for the... It's an original pattern that I just published on Ravelry and they are dedicated once again to the fantastic buildings of the Canal Grande in Venice. And this especially is dedicated to Palazzo Pisani which is a beautiful, beautiful building that is facing the Grand Canal and that used to belong to the family Pisani, a very important family, a very important surname in Venice, and is now the base of the Venetian Conservatory of Music, where I personally study and graduated in piano and composition. Uh, I spent so much time into the building through those um, study rooms and music rooms that uh, I couldn't but dedicate a design to that building. The building itself is just very magical and if you want a full emotional description of that building, go to my previous blog. I was getting a little emotional as well when I was describing the feeling of that. But today let's talk about the pattern. So, it's knitted and written from the uh, calf and down. The calf has, of course, an Italian cast on with uh, a two, three centimeters of ribbing. A detail in color work which uh, wants kind of to recall the facade of the building with all these long and uh, very, very sleek windows. And then going down through the body of the sock and the calf and um, as well the instep and the uh, and the foot. It is knitted using a technique between stranded color work and intarsia. You basically do a row of uh, or a round of uh, stranded color work and the second round will be 
mosaic. I just said intarsia is mosaic. The second round will be mosaic. The goal here is basically to carry the white yarn over the entire sock, creating this beautiful uh, vertical lines. But I found that if I did that in pure color work going through the entire place, the sock would become really stiff and not elastic at all. So the second round then, when you use mosaic, you basically slip the white stitch without knitting it and you only knit with the main color, which gives you, first of all, a lot of elasticity so it's not as stiff as the strand color work, but as well gives you a little bit of a bump in the um, stripes, on the stripes, and it gives you a little bit of texture as well, which is something that I really enjoy, especially in socks that I'm knitting for house purposes, just to walk around and chill out rather than socks that I need to be using, shoes and stuff like that. The other piece is the construction of the gusset and the heel. It is basically my great-grandmother construction for a heel that I wrote down from a pair of socks that she knitted for myself back in the days that I had in a drawer. A recipe didn't exist, I wasn't uh, into knitting back when my great-grandmother was uh, alive and uh, I didn't ask her how she used to do that and even if I did ask her how she used to knit their heels I probably wouldn't have understood because I was too young. Uh, I tried to ask my mom if she remembers or my granny but they don't really remember and they don't really knit socks so it was a labor of love to try to knit the same thing from a finished work. It was a little bit of an archaeology type of situation uh, for socks. But I'm really happy with the construction. You basically keep working in the round for the heel flap and creating the gusset all together with the heel flap. And then finally you knit the heel turn in contrasting color. I couldn't figure out how to get strand color work on the heel turn as well to create a unified type of work. But, but it quite worked anyway and I really don't mind this little black triangle for the heel turn. I find it quite interesting. And uh, yeah, so here you have it. These are called Palazzo Pisani and it's a pattern on my rubbery store. If you want, uh, I can put the link below in the description so you can check it out. I want to thank all the test knitters for this pair of socks. This has been tested so many times that I feel like the pattern is probably the best that I have out there in terms of um, improvements in the language, improvements in the way I describe things and as well improvements in the knitting techniques. So check it out, it's absolutely gorgeous and it's very speedy to knit. Again, Palazzo Pisani. I unfortunately went through a kind of a break between a breakup with sock knitting. I don't know, I know that this happens for many knitters and many podcasters, but I haven't been casting on socks in about three weeks, which is a long time for me. But uh, yeah, that will come back probably, hopefully. And if you have any recommendation for me how to make a sock mojo to come back, just let me know because I kind of want to get the 12 month of the year with 12 pair of socks. And for now we are in April, which is the fourth month. And I think I managed to get four sock pattern out there. But April is running fast and furious, so I have no idea if I can manage to get one for May. Uh, but yeah, just let me know. How do you do that? How do you get your mojo back or you want to need something again back? Anyway, uh, this is just another thought for another day. So let's get on with the finished works. And... Uh, 
If you follow me, you know that I'm knitting all Arne and Carlos Christmas balls. And this is number nine from their 55 Christmas balls to knit. I haven't stuffed it yet, but it's finished. It's just a matter of getting it stuffed. It's a lovely design with three colors that plays together, but you only basically need two colors at the time. And uh, it's so far my favorite Christmas ball that I've done so far from Arden Carlos. The um, original one was knitted in a green, red and white, but I substituted the green with a gray which is kind of more traditional where I'm from for Christmas colors. Everything is like gray and red rather than red and green, if it does make any sense. I don't know why, but uh, probably the green comes from the US, I would say, or England, Ireland, like Nordic countries, but I don't know. But anyway, uh, it's, a, it's a lovely little construction. I'm knitting all of them very very slowly and uh, it's kind of um, fading out a bit. I only have nine balls but uh, I eventually I will have more at least to decorate one Christmas tree. I'm knitting this using um, Fable by Drops which is their sock yarn 25 and uh, 75. It's a lovely little yarn. I just got uh, I decided to knit this uh, with this yarn because it's um, easily available in Ireland and I knew that I could get as much quantity as I could rather than having to stress myself to get more yarn from abroad or yarn that I can't get in the same dye lot or in the same color. So it's uh, a very easy, very common uh, yarn. And uh, yeah, here you go, another Christmas ball finished. And on to the next one. The Christmas ball situation brings us to the last Finnish work, which is as well a call for help. So, knitting the Christmas ball by Arne and Carlos, I kind of um, had always on the back of my mind the fact that I could well, let's say, first of all, the fact that they are quite fiddly to knit. They are quite um, annoying to knit. Uh, they're very small yarn and I decided to use very small needles as well. I use, of course, number two to create a nice thick fabric with the uh, sock yarn. And uh, you knit in the round using four needles. I tried to use the magic loop technique as well. But still, it takes a lot of time. Like a little ball like this would take about an hour and a half, slash two hours to knit. And um, that was the first consideration. The second consideration that I had is that they are so pretty that I really wanted to make my own. So what I have done this week is uh, this. <laughs> it's basically designing a new way to make Christmas balls using the Strand Color Work technique and the Magic Loop technique with uh, some other techniques that I learned on the way. If you've seen, I created a pattern for a shamrock very recently, so increasing and decreasing at a certain speed and a certain percentage gives you different shape. So I played around so many times, like I can't even uh, recall how many times, but eventually I got a bubble type of shape. And I started as well playing around with the different strand of color works. This is a completely original way to knit Christmas balls that I couldn't find anywhere else on the internet. I'm not going to show you too much because I really want to make something out of this. But just let me show you my most favorite one, which is this one, with little pua type of thing, little dots. It's just really, really pretty. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to work more on these Christmas balls. So, 
A little bit about uh, the yarn. I'm using a DK yarn that I had in stash. This is probably drop uh, Charisma. I don't recall because these are just prototypes and I'm using scrap yarn that I can find around the place. And as it happens, I have a lot of scrap DK. And thankfully, uh, a skein of a red color as well, so I can get a nice contrasting color with the gray. Uh, it's uh, knitted using the magic loop technique with a number of increases and decreases here and there to get this like ball shape. They take no time at all. When you understand how the technique works, in an hour you can get a couple done. I'm not even joking. So, the thing that I would like to do and that I would probably need your help is to create at least 24 Christmas balls and uh, a sort of, um, or include them in a sort of uh, advent calendar for December on the ramp up for Christmas. Um, here in um, Europe, I guess, because it's popular in Italy, but as well in uh, Ireland, so I think it's a European thing, we do have like uh, advent calendars um, events or advent calendars uh, uh, things, uh, like um, calendars that every day in December until Christmas day you open a box, a present uh, or a little chocolate wrap and every day you get a little surprise, a little sentiment, stuff like that. So I kind of wanted to include these patterns there in a sort of advent calendar thing. The point is that I would like this to be physical. I would like to have the actual calendar done in a paper type of situation rather than publishing the pattern every day on my website or Ravelry, which will be probably the way I am going to go if my idea of having a material thing doesn't work out. I know that we are in April and uh, time is flying fast and if someone wants to buy the calendars it needs to be ready at least for September. So we don't have much time to figure this out. But if you have any idea on how I can work through making this sort of advent calendars of patterns, that will be really, really helpful. I was thinking of uh, including a little bit of uh, an illustration made by me or a, like a, a painting type of uh, design in the pattern and make them as little A5 cards within envelopes within a box that I can put on my Etsy shop perhaps and then leave it open for crafter to purchase and sell. I don't know. What do you think? Have you done something like this before? If you have, please let me know. I don't know if um, reaching out to any publishers will help at all. I've tried to publish before on a completely different uh, topic uh, that didn't really work well. So I'm quite afraid of uh, proposing myself to publishing companies, also because this is an original idea in terms of um, construction and yarn and techniques used, but you know, the great Arda and Carlos have done this before and their book is really, really popular, so I don't think there will be an appetite for any stuff like this anymore. But once again, if you have any suggestion, any recommendation for me on how to deal with this thing, please let me know. I'll be really interested in understanding more how it works. That was it for the finished work and I'm super mega thirsty. I am going to grab a cup of tea and see you here in a second. So let's start with the works in progress. And uh, I have just a couple, just because I've been casting off so much lately that I didn't really have any time to work on new cast on. But the first one that you have seen before is 
coming from this cone of yarn. This is from JC Rennie. It's 100% uh, British super soft wool. It's uh, like a very light fingering weight yarn and the color is, uh, I would say, jeans blue or denim blue, something like that. Anyway, you've seen this going on in my previous vlog as well. This is the body of a jumper. I managed to knit about 20 centimeters. This is just because it takes so long to knit. It's so thin and I'm using a 2.5 millimeters needles, which is just a labor of love all over. What am I doing with this? I don't know. So, I casted on the number of stitches that I know that this needle and this yarn will give me for a perfect fit for a jumper. And the idea was to, I don't know, find a pattern that uh, would work well, find a nice uh, color work yoke that would work well from some existing pattern, or indeed knit uh, something um, of my own, a new design to come up with. Going through the knit and going through many patterns on rubberies and on other books, I kind of didn't find anything and I feel like the potential of uh, this piece of fabric here is quite big for a new original pattern. So this is what I'm uh, kind of thinking to drive through. I would love to make a raglan sweater with an original color work design for the yoke. I will probably use something that I already have in my collection, some Venetian team pattern perhaps, or indeed some Irish team pattern that I probably use for socks or other items in my rubbery. I don't know yet. I don't know how this will work out, I don't know how this will turn or in what it will turn into, but it's uh, a nice mindless stockinet piece of work that I'm really very much enjoying so far. Um, and as well, it gives me the possibility to get rid of some of these cones that, uh, as far as you know, I'm ordering in my place and I'm ordering them all of the time. This was quite a a tongue twist, but this is the first work in progress. And my second work in progress comes from three coals of yarn. This is uh, the grey yarn here, is the same yarn I use for the Kista waistcoat. It's uh, from uh, Holst Garn, and this is the flannel grey which I am contrasting with uh, another navy blue yarn from Holst Garn and uh, as well the, powder, the Summer Storm from uh, Woolenit. These are the same way uh, wool and they are more or less the same composition as well. All of them are 100% wool. Again, I don't know what type of wool or what breed of sheep. I know that the two um, sorry, I know that the uh, Woolenit one is 100% British wool, but that's the only thing that I can collect. What am I making with this tree? It's really tricky to navigate here, the situation. I just started this mess here. It's uh, very tangled up, but it's not impossible to untangle, it's just for the filming proposition I took everything over, shovel it into my, onto my table and uh, yeah, this is what you do when you're not a professional podcaster. Anyway, there is just a very beginning of a pattern showing up. This is once again a pattern from Sunness Garn, which comes from a book uh, a booklet that I was looking for for a very long time. This is the 2015 Men issue from Sunness Garn. It's a fantastic book. I really love every single design of them. And the jumper that I'm attempting to make is this one, is the Pelle Sweater or Pelle Gunser, something like that. 
It's uh, a beautiful color work design with the raglan decreases and uh, it, it is worn from the bottom and up. And uh, yeah, it's just a very, very stunning pattern. Though it will take a long, long time to knead up because it's full on color work everywhere in the body, the sleeves, and uh, yeah, it's uh, quite, it's gonna be quite a labor of love. I would like to thank all of my Instagram followers to recommend me uh, or suggest me where to buy this booklet here. I couldn't find it anywhere on the internet, it was impossible, so eventually I went over to eBay. I don't really like buying stuff on eBay, but um, that was uh, the only place I could find this available. In other places I saw this book available, but they require a purchase of uh, yarn as well, and uh, considering the import fees to Ireland, that wasn't quite feasible. I just I wanted the booklet itself and I have plenty of yarn. So anyway, I finally got it. Uh, every single one of these pattern is worth to look at and I am probably going to make them all because, you know, they are just very, very beautiful. And uh, yeah, it's uh, the thing that I love about this book is as well the picture they are taking in such a beautiful way that uh, really inspires you, especially for men type of garments and clothing. We don't really have many good quality pictures taken and usually you end up making a garment from a lady pattern but um, it's very nice to see how the garment fit on a male body as well and I'm always on the lookout for this type of pattern and uh, especially this type of booklets they are my new discovered love so again if you have any other kind of uh, book or booklet or pattern this situation written in this way with a reference to a male body that would be really helpful and really uh, inspireful for me as well i don't know even if inspireful is a word but you got the meaning so that was my second and last work in progress the plan for going forward is to continue with my collection of christmas bubbles understand and figure out the way to make the advent calendar happen and if uh, I'm blessed with an editor looking at this video that wants to reach out uh, please do because that would really mean a lot for my knitting type of career but anyway that will be it. I will keep knitting onto these two uh, jumpers and uh, hopefully have something done with them. I don't foresee next week to have anything finished or at least none of these jumpers. I don't know if I'm going to cast on a new pair of socks for now, but that will probably come. Still, I need uh, to have my apartment fixed <laughs> a little bit, so there may be something else coming up uh, next week. And then it's the Holy Week uh, leading to Easter, the week after, in which I will be, um, of course, celebrating Easter, probably with my family, friends, for sure. Anyway, that was it for my Finnish works as well. And let's get into acquisitions. I only acquired one piece of wool this month or this couple of weeks gone since the last podcast uh, because I just purchased a lot of wool and I have so much in my stash that I don't even know where to put it. I am full of jumper quantities and uh, full of sock yarn. A lovely lady from the knitting room uh, here in Dublin, which is one of the local yarn shops in Dublin, reached out to me through Instagram if I wanted to try their new hand-dyed yarn, which is this one.
This is called Silver Moon Yarn. It's a lovely hand-dyed kind of um, orangey yellowish yarn. I know that on camera it looks super bright but it's actually quite muted and uh, this is 100% merino 4 ply wool with a very high twist so it's perfect for socks. I haven't got 100% merino wool for socks at all but I am really really enjoying the feeling of this yarn. It's very squishy, it's really really shiny and the color is just right up my alley. I will probably use this as a contrasting color for, I don't know, a piece of work, perhaps uh, some socks, perhaps a garment. I have two skeins here. They don't say on the label at all how much yarn it is or what's the weight of these two balls, but by feeling they are 250 grams balls skeins, sorry. And uh, yeah, do you have any recommendation for me? Anything that uh, you think I could get knitted with this too? Bear in mind that I don't like to knit shawls or scarves. I don't use them and therefore I'm really not knitting them. So I feel like this would last me for like four pair of socks. So if you have any idea of a larger type of garment or accessory that is not a shawl, let me know. I would really love to come up with an original pattern just to dedicate to this uh, silver moon yarn, which is really, really pretty. And uh, it was really kind from the knitting room here in Dublin to gift me with these two skeins. If you are interested, to purchasing yarn from them. I will put a link below in the description to their shop. They are amazing. Um, the variety of yarns that they have is just incredible and we are really blessed here in Dublin to have them as well. Something that is coming into the post though is another couple of books. Uh, I got a book for Gansei sweaters. I have no idea what they are. I have no idea if I would even like them, but I've seen on uh, YouTube and doing some research about the tradition of uh, Gansi sweaters and beautiful patterns made with uh, only pearls and knits that are just stunning. And the sweater themselves look amazing. So I couldn't but buy myself the book and that will come in the post very soon. I also got a couple of other books, but it's kind of a secret that I will tell you in my next podcast. But they didn't come yet in the post. I was hoping to have them today for you, but uh, yeah, that didn't really happen. So I am going on take some photos of my finished works and the works in progress for this video. Gonna take some pictures for my Instagram for this lovely little jumper here and I will start trying to enjoy a little bit of a weekend and um, just erase from my mind all the bad adventures that happened this week. Once again, if you are interested in um, purchasing one of my patterns uh, that will very much support me, check out my um, rubbery shop. We did have, uh, and we do have currently, a bow tie pattern that is selling to support UNICEF.ie for uh, to give support to Ukrainian refugees, especially children. And for that pattern, we already had 25 sales, which is uh, quite a amount of money that uh, I donated already to uh, UNICEF through you guys and thank you so much for being so kind and purchasing that pattern. I will keep donating 100% of that uh, pattern sale until the crisis is over and then afterwards the pattern will be for free in the rubbery shop. But uh, it's only 3 euro and we'll go to support a great cause. We already donated quite a bit of money so it would be nice to keep running that. If you are enjoying this video, if you had 
uh, found any value from this video, please consider to subscribe to my channel and get the notifications on so you get um, you be aware that my next video is coming up or everything that happens in my community, in my crafty world and I try to share as much as possible. And again, give it a thumbs up. This always helps to trigger a little bit the algorithm. I'll see you very soon and I wish you a very, very good weekend. Bye-bye.